A controversial new study suggests that people have lived on the southern continent for as long as 120,000 years, almost twice as long as previously thought. This is just one of the mysteries of Australia, which also has some head-scratching linguistic, genetic, and botanical oddities that will be discussed in this video. Before you think that this is some fringe theory however, let me make it clear, this is a study by professional anthropologists and scientists that was published in a reputable scientific journal. The research was published in the journal Proceedings of the Royal Society of Victoria by scientists from a leading Australian university. Australia's original population is said to be the oldest continuing civilization on Earth, but just how old? It's currently believed that modern humans, aka Homo sapiens, made their way to Australia as long as 65,000 years ago. But new evidence uncovered at a dig site in the continent's southeast may push the timeline back much further. If the site does turn out to be human-made, it suggests that people have been living in Australia for as long as 120,000 years. The place of interest, known as the Moigil site, is located in Warrnambool, in southwest Victoria, Australia. Archaeologists have been investigating the area for many years, and the basis for these extraordinary claims is a mound of materials including sand, seashells, and stones. That might not sound like much, but scientists suggest this is what's known as a midden, essentially, an ancient landfill. The remains of fish, crabs and shellfish have been discovered in the mound, which may be all that remains of long-eaten meals. Charcoal, blackened stones and other features may be all that's left of the ancient fireplaces. Professor Jim Bowler is one of Australia's most celebrated geologists. He made the startling discovery of Australia's oldest human remains at Lake Mungo, a dry lake bed in central New South Wales. Professor Bowler asserts that absolute proof of a human occupation would be the presence of stone artifacts or human remains. Neither has been found at the site so far, but neither are they found in many of the younger coastal middens in Australia. Indeed, a human site of this antiquity, at the southern edge of the continent, has international implications. The campfire could have also been made by tropical Denisovans, who were believed to have inhabited New Guinea, based on recent DNA studies. The Coswamp skull is also an interesting mystery, given its primitive traits. But discussion of this topic is controversial, due to the views of some early anthropologists, who use skull shape to promote stereotypes of native people. A note on the use of the term Aboriginal Australian, there is some disagreement as to the term best used to describe these people, but this is the generally accepted term. I apologize if this term offends anyone. The really intriguing part of the site is its shockingly old age. If the site does turn out to be a human site, it could force us to rewrite not just the history of Australia, but our understanding of global human migration. Dating of the shells, burnt stones and surrounding hardened sands, by a variety of methods has established that the deposit was formed about 120,000 years ago. That's about twice the presently accepted age of arrival of people on the Australian continent, based on most archaeological evidence. A human site of this antiquity, at the southern edge of the continent, would be of international significance because of its implications for the movement of modern humans out of Africa. But there are quite a few caveats to these claims. For one, there's every chance that the mounds aren't middens at all, but natural formations of some kind. Definitive proof of human occupation from that era, such as tools or bones, have yet to be found. On top of that, genetic studies have shown that Aboriginal people only split off from other human populations about 75,000 years ago, after their ancestors migrated out of Africa, through Southeast Asia and into Australia. The oldest known definitive proof of humans on the continent are artifacts dated to 65,000 years ago, found in Kakadu National Park, along Australia's northern coast. This makes sense, given it's close to the islands that people were thought to have used to cross over. But the site is on the complete opposite side of the continent, and it's hard to believe humans appeared that far south, at a time when they were otherwise believed to be more or less restricted to Africa. Modern humans aren't thought to have entered Asia before about 100,000 years ago. The researchers recognized the need for a very high level of proof for the site's origin. But importantly, despite these controversies, they all agree that available evidence fails to prove conclusively that the site is of natural origin. 
therefore, the possibility remains that it is of human origin. What do you think of this site, is it natural or human-made? Nevertheless, an unprecedented DNA study has found evidence of a single human migration out of Africa, and confirmed that Aboriginal Australians are the world's oldest civilization. This is the first extensive DNA study of Aboriginal Australians, according to the University of Cambridge. Researchers obtained permission to extract DNA from 83 Aboriginal Australians and 25 Papuans from New Guinea, and sequence their complete genetic information. While some scholars have theorized that indigenous Australians descended from a separate, earlier migration than that of Eurasian people, the study reports that the majority of non-Africans stem from a single ancestral group of migrants who left Africa approximately 72,000 years ago, and eventually spread across the other continents. European and Asian ancestral groups became genetically distinct around 42,000 years ago. But the researchers say that occurred even earlier, approximately 58,000 years ago, in the case of indigenous Papuan and Australian ancestral groups, as they ventured eastward. The DNA suggests that, rather than having left in a separate wave, most of the genomes of Papuans and Aboriginal Australians can be traced back to a single out-of-Africa event, which led to modern worldwide populations. There may have been other migrations, but the evidence so far points to one exit event. Around 60,000 years ago, the wave of migration reached Sahul, an ancient supercontinent composed of present-day Australia, Tasmania, and New Guinea. These explorers arrived prior to the landmasses' separation by rising sea levels, at the end of an ice age. At that time, Aboriginal Australians became genetically isolated, making it the world's oldest civilization. The study also found that Aboriginal Australians and Papuans diverged from each other around 37,000 years ago, although the reason is unclear because the deep water separation between New Guinea and Australia had yet to be completed. The researchers theorize the break could have been attributed to early flooding of the Carpentaria Basin, that left Australia connected to New Guinea by only a narrow, impassable strip of land. By 31,000 years ago, Aboriginal Australian communities became genetically isolated and started to diverge greatly from one another. This is likely due to the development of the inhospitable desert in the interior of the continent. The genetic diversity among Aboriginal Australians is remarkable. Because the continent has been populated for such a long time, groups from southwestern Australia are genetically more different from northeastern Australia than Native Americans are from Siberians. One other notable finding from the DNA study is evidence of a mystery hominin group that interbred with modern humans, as they migrated through island Southeast Asia on their way to Australia. Around 4% of the Aboriginal Australian genome comes from this unknown human relative. These Melanesian and Australian ancestors probably encountered them close to Sahul, when they were connected during low sea levels. These tropical Denisovans or Neanderthals also most likely made the crossing to Sahul, sometime in the distant past, based on genetic studies. Scientists don't know who these mystery people were, but they were a relative of the Denisovans, although their DNA is as different from Denisovans as from Neanderthals. This means that this mystery human should have a separate name. Scholars have also been flummoxed as to why the language spoken by 90% of Australia's Aboriginal people is relatively young. It is approximately 4,000 years old according to language experts. One possible answer is that a second migration into Australia, by people speaking this language, occurred around 4,000 years ago. However, a previously unidentified internal dispersal of Aboriginal people, that swept from the northeast across Australia around that time, led to the linguistic and cultural linking of the continent's indigenous people. Although they had a sweeping impact on ancient Australian culture, these ghost-like people mysteriously disappeared from the genetic record. It's a really strange scenario, a few mysterious people appeared in different villages and communities around Australia. They changed the way people speak and think, then they disappeared, like ghosts, and people just carried on living in isolation the same way they always had. This may have happened for religious or cultural reasons that we can only speculate about. But in genetic terms, anthropologists have never seen anything like it before. 
Another mystery of Australia is how the iconic bobe, or boabab tree came to live in Australia, Madagascar, and East Africa. The origin of Australia's bobe is one of modern botany's great conundrums. How does a tree species, whose only living relatives lie nearly 10,000 kilometers away on the other side of the Indian Ocean, end up in an isolated corner of the Australian continent? Scientists have spent many years studying the bob and its relatives, but their explanations of the bob's origins are as distant from one another as the opposite shores of a metaphorical Indian Ocean. One thing on which they agree is that the bob isn't a Gondwan and remnant, like the deciduous beech tree. The breakup of the supercontinent saw Australia, Africa, and Madagascar detach from each other more than 120 million years ago. Genetic analysis of the species on both sides of the Indian Ocean shows that trees are still too closely related for the bob to have been isolated for millions of years. DNA studies of the tree show scientists that the Australian species is startlingly young, a mere 72,000 years old. Coincidentally, another study suggests that the fire regime in Australia changed around 70,000 years ago, suggesting the arrival of people on the continent. With sea levels 70,000 years ago being up to 150 meters lower than they are today, there were many islands and landmasses in the Indian Ocean that we can't see now. Accordingly, early humans may not have traveled overland, but ventured to Australia by sea, bringing the bobe with them. The final clue in the riddle lies in exquisite rock paintings. What appear to be bobe trees are seen in this ancient art, showing a reverence and a sense that the artists might not have survived without the bobe. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed this content, please destroy the like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends, and leave a thought-provoking comment.